Well, we are entering a very special week here in Canada. Believe it or not, uh, there is a week dedicated to, I guess, increasing our awareness of invasive species and the threat that they pose to uh, not only our native fish and and other critters uh, that live on the landscape, but also um, a threat to uh, species at risk and to help put us put all of this into perspective a real pleasure to welcome colin casson he's the apology manager for the invasive species center based out of ontario colin thanks so much for spending a little bit of time with us thanks for having me michael so i guess to the point why do we have a national invasive species week yeah, we've been working on it for a few years now. Um, the National uh, Invasive Species Awareness Week is a, is a campaign we've run, um, I guess, four or five years now. And the idea behind it is, is there's a lot of people uh, all across Canada who are impacted by invasive species. And some, you know, maybe not as, as obvious of, of a point of connection as others. So it's nice to bring them together, talk about a shared issue, whether your interests are in forestry, you know, recreating it in our aquatic lakes. Uh, uh, you know, fishing and angling, hunting, uh, maybe it's horticulture and gardening or, or keeping uh, fish in a fish tank. You know, you name it, there is a connection point in there to invasive species. So NISA is our, is our opportunity to get those folks together, uh, have a shared conversation digitally and, uh, and, and just talk about how invasive species impact us, cost us all money, cost us all ecologically and, and have implications for our lives. You mentioned that uh, the week was sort of established five years ago, roughly. Was that was was did something happen five years ago that that uh, this type of an issue became something that just could no longer sit in the background? Yeah, there's been a great campaign out of the states for a few years uh, beyond what we've been running. Uh, their, their version of, of a similar campaign talking about invasive species in a in a very collaborative big way uh, for a week and, and we thought it was a great opportunity to bring that kind of shared date shared message into Canada in a Canadian context so uh, this year in 2022 we're going to be running February 28th through March 4th and uh, really looking forward to lots of good content coming up online for that you 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 talked about just about every segment of our society is connected in one way or another to having an input onto the land base um, but a lot of, especially here in Alberta, it seems a lot of attention is placed on what folks are are doing with their aquarium um, contents that, you know, it gets to that point where a fish no longer is welcome in the home. And so rather than putting it down the toilet or disposing it in a, another safe way, it ends up in, in storm ponds or lakes or rivers. Um, where, where do you stand on that issue and, and what should be people, people be paying attention to? It's nice to see the conversations happening around organisms and trade or, or, or pets or, or, you know, don't letting it loose is, is usually our campaign messaging there. And um, it's an important pathway. And I think, I think historically we haven't maybe um, had an opportunity to connect in with those audiences related to, to don't let it loose as, as we were fortunate to have an opportunity today. So nice to see that conversation happening. And, and, you know, to the point of connection, I think that's the important idea here is that, you know, this issue, this pathway has implications for anglers, for hunters, for, for outdoor enthusiasts and other people who are using, uh, recreating within natural resources in different ways, just as it does to the responsibility of folks who are keeping those pets. Um, or participating in that sector and space. So it's just nice to have that conversation point, I guess, to kind of hopefully help people understand that there's this continuum from people who are using this uh, uh, species in trade for, for recreational and hobby purposes. And uh, and those, you know, should the, the unfortunate decision be made to release those into the natural environment, which of course is very much not a best practice for a whole plethora of reasons, but that can have impacts to the downstream users, folks who are out there, um, angling or, or again, you know, maybe it's uh, zebra mussels being released through moss falls, uh, another kind of important uh, way that some of those species can be released into our environment, which is very much uh, not a desired outcome and something this campaign in particular is trying to focus on. This year. In a perfect world, Colin, uh, I guess the, uh, you know, uh, me as someone that wants to buy um, fish and, 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 and aquarium bits and pieces and, and start that hobby, um, I would do all I can to educate myself and, and understand what it is I'm buying. But 
we don't live in a perfect world. People in the last, you know, kind of a last minute thing, uh, uh, the son or the daughter wants the fish, they go out and buy it. I, I guess my point is, um, is there effort being made at point of purchase so that those folks that are selling these types of um, uh, hobby gear and, and animals and fish are also aware of their responsibility in this whole process? Yeah, we're trying to connect in with that audience, that point of sale, you're right. That's, you know, there's a few touch points that we have in terms of opportunities to engage with that audience. And that and that's the first and most important one is is working with those who are either retailers or, or kind of um, at that stage of the game at that at that touch point. How can we work with them? And so some of the things we've done is work for, with uh, some larger big box style retailers and just trying to make sure that at least their staff and, and, and websites and other communications mediums are are um, you know aware of this as a concern? Of course, you know regulations and legislation are different across Canada as they are in North America, from province to province, from federal to provincial. Um, so you know it's it's trying to address this in a holistic way is is a bit of a challenge. But that's one opportunity we've taken. So you know if you, if you do check out your your big box retailers, you will find some information now on their websites, which we really appreciate getting that message out because it's very important. And of course, some species are prohibited for sales for the worst of the worst. That's another great opportunity for us to kind of change that point a little bit. Um, but I think we also have to recognize there's other mediums and mechanisms that these species move around or are bought and sold. E-commerce is very much a thing, of course. And so how can we kind of you know, uh, acknowledge and respect the fact that it's not just at those kind of traditional retail points, uh, whether it's big box or, or maybe smaller, more specialized local uh, stores, but we need to find other ways to connect in with this audience of, of who these hobbyists are. And so some of the steps we've taken there is try and use social media, try and use the spaces that those new hobbyists to that um, to that forum, to that sector. We, you know, where do they go to get their information? And usually we see that through social media, Facebook groups and, and other similar forums. And so we've done uh, some work this year, especially the last couple of months, and trying to engage with those um, communication channels and try and get them sharing the information on how important uh, um, organisms in trade or aquatic species for a hobbyist user perspective can be and, and what is responsible um, in terms of, you know, when your relationship with your pet ends, um, how do we get rid of it? What do we do? They're challenging questions. And of course, you know, they can be had under under difficult circumstances, but, but what are the right things we can do to make sure that we're protecting our natural resource uh, in addition to the right, to doing the right ethical thing uh, when that relationship ends. Now, there really is a, I, I guess, a, um, an interactive component to the, to the awareness week and that you really are encouraging people to, to get on social media, to use their voice and their platforms to help, um, spread, uh, I guess, uh, some good news about, you know, protecting our environment, but also sort of raising the red flag and, and saying, Hey, we got to be careful about what we release uh, or plant or anything uh, in terms of uh, our interaction with, with our, our local habitats. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, you know, the, the catchphrase we use is, is spread the word, not the species for this, this campaign. Right. And I think that's, that's what we're trying to do. We're, we're trying to present the information in a, a relatable way. That's not alarmist, but does identify the kind of key challenges and, and issues that we do face. And so, you know, the, the national invasive species awareness week is a, is a big uh, campaign that does have, uh, have many kind of threads and key message opportunities. One of those is, of course, organisms in trade because it is an important pathway, but by all means, it's not the only one. There's, there's quite a few other kind of messages we're trying to get across. Uh, and in terms of kind of those good news stories, those success stories, there's a few of them out there and we're happy to share the word on them. Uh, of course, there's a story out of St. Albert, Alberta, which is a really great case study, a good example of, of you know, how a small action can be taken by uh, from an individual and how we can kind of uh, prevent more challenging circumstances from, from goldfish releases or, or koi releases or any number of other organism and trade releases. So the campaign is pretty big and broad, but that's a great example of a success. We'd love to see more and we're happy to share the news on that one. Absolutely. And, and I guess this is a, I guess a, a big question, but it's a, it's a big world that has begun to shrunk. And when we look at the influx of potential invasive species into North America, not just Canada, but across North America, um, it really does highlight the point that um, we've all got to be kind of on the, 
on the watch for these things and your collaboration with other groups and agencies and organizations is absolutely critical. Yeah, it's true. None of us individually are solving this challenge. This is a big, uh, you know, a wicked problem that has so many stakeholders and, and uh, honestly, a lack of understanding of how they're connected too, right? I think some folks are coming to this, you know, from a perspective of trying to manage and support natural resources and protect them. And, you know, whether it's protecting the interests of species at risk in a water body and, and stopping a release that would have negative consequences on them, that, that might be a great example of it. Or for other users that, you know, they might not be particularly interested in that. They might be interested in how invasive species impact the pocketbooks of municipalities or other ratepayers. And there's very significant consequences there too that that we're just happy to kind of raise and identify and help people understand that uh, different sectors and different kind of interest perspectives, you know, this is an issue that cuts through all of those and, and finds, unfortunately, its way into your, your particular interest, whether you're a, an avid outdoors person or, or, or maybe more of an indoor aquarium hobbyist or anybody in between. Uh, invasive species, is, you know, have a great linkage into you. And I think that's one of our goals of the campaign is trying to make sure that everyone can understand their touch point on, on invasive species and how it can impact them. Well, we certainly wish you best of luck for the campaign and uh, no doubt we'll have an opportunity to chat with you down the road. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Michael.